Hello everyone, this is a public service announcement that the City of Dallas and the Mexican Consulate in Dallas are putting together. Uh, this is a part of a series of different PSAs that we have been putting together to inform the community uh, in this time of crisis due to the new coronavirus. I am Edurne Pineda, Deputy Consul of Mexico here in Dallas, and we are thrilled to have today with us Liz Cedillo Pereira, who is Chief of Equity and Inclusion of the City of Dallas. Liz has been a champion, a real champion, of integrating the immigrant community of Dallas and helping them to reach their maximum capacity and ability to contribute in the best way possible to the success and future of the city of Dallas. Uh, so Liz, welcome. Thank you for this opportunity to interview you. You have always been a great friend and ally of the Mexican consulate. And we are very appreciative of the opportunity to talk to you about the current health crisis and to learn about how the city of Dallas is preparing to support its people and especially the immigrant community. But first of all, I would like to ask you to please talk to us a little bit about the Office of Equity and Inclusion that you lead, uh, about this big umbrella of different topics and offices and services that uh, the Office or Department of Inclusion and e Equity include. Sure, and welcome to the city of Dallas, Consul. We're thrilled to have you here, you. even under these circumstances. It's always a pleasure to work hand in hand to serve our community. So I'm glad that you're here and I hope you feel welcome. I do, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I'd love to tell you about our offices of equity and inclusion. We're really an umbrella of several offices within this sector of the um, city and six offices, one being the Office of Environmental Quality, the other being Fair Housing and Human Rights, another office being the Office of Equity, another office being Office of Human Rights, and fair housing. We also have our Office of Ethics, and finally our Office of Welcoming Communities and Immigrant Affairs. And it's this one that is striving to reach out to our community that was, that's come from another country. We know that immigrants make up 20, nearly a quarter of our population here in the city of Dallas. A very important part of our communities, a very important part of our schools, a very important part of our economy. And this office was set up and structured to, to meet the needs of our community who comes from another country. That is fantastic. And we know that the city of Dallas, with this effort that you're just talking about, is point of lands. It's state of the art in many ways um, in trying to, to integrate the immigrant community. So congratulations and thank you always for this big effort and wonderful job that you do. No, we couldn't do it without you, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. So now uh, trying to focus into today's topic, which is a current coronavirus crisis. I would like to ask you uh, if you can talk to us a little bit about the emergency orders, the stay-at-home orders that different state and local authorities have been issuing. It can be a little bit confusing because we hear about different um, orders at different levels, the state, county, city. Could you explain to us what is the current situation for the city of Dallas? Please. Yes, I'm, I'm pleased to explain the current orders and, and I'm so glad that you mentioned that they are subject to change. So in most cases, the city of Dallas is going to follow along the lines of what the county uh, is doing in this regard because they are the, uh, the leader of public health in, in this area. So there's multiple cities in the Dallas County and we are one of them, the biggest one, um, but we are following um, the guidance in most cases of what the Dallas County is doing. Does this mean people cannot go outside, cannot leave their houses? Can they actually go out, buy groceries, take a walk around the block? What can they do and what can they cannot do under this stay-at-home stay order? I think we all know at this point how serious the situation is, how dangerous uh, a virus the COVID-19 is, and so it's, it was not without a lot of um, determination by our mayor and city council, our city manager, to say that everybody, please stay in the house. Uh, we had to shut down many of our businesses. And we know that Dallas area is known for our business, our commerce. And, and, um, and so that was a great effort on their part because of the public health necessity. 
So, so when we say stay in the house, it's only for the benefit of the people who make up our city and county. Um, so yes, there are exceptions to this rule, and those exceptions are consider it if you needed to do something to survive. <laughs> and, and part of that is mental health. We know that you have to walk. We know that you have to get out. So yes, you can go outside and take a walk, but please do it with the respect that, or with regard to the fact that you have to maintain six, six feet of distance like we are today. Mm -hmm. and, and it's also to, to maintain certain work, work that's deemed essential. And I can go into what is considered essential. Yes. And also to go to the, to the food store, to the grocery store, to, to purchase food for your family or for a loved one who can't get out into the community and to take care of essential medical necessities. Of course, if you're feeling symptoms of, of the virus, you would want to go and get tested immediately. There is out there, I believe, some misunderstanding about how the virus affects, affects young people. There are some people that believe that children and young people are immune to the virus. Would you have any type of advice or message to the young uh, people within our community in this regard? The message is out there that it doesn't affect children. Well, that is not accurate. It does affect children. And many times children or anybody could be asymptomatic uh, and still be uh, infectious and carrying it with them. So maybe they won't be as impacted as our, our seniors would be or people who have an underlying health condition, but certainly they could carry it and cause others to be ill. So think of your grandparents, think of your parents, think of your tias, tios, uh, uncles and aunts who, who could be uh, um, affected by a person, by a young person, and certainly a young person could uh, contract the, the illness and, and has. We are now um, away in the data and in in, in numbers of cases from New York City. Some people uh, ask themselves, why is Dallas taking such strong measures if we are so apparently far away from New York City? Right, well, the, we know that this is an exponential situation that one day uh, everything is as normal and the next day we see what we're seeing in other big cities, right? But what we know is that the city of New York is, is about two weeks ahead of us. And so that's why we have these very strict rules, these very um, staunch orders to stay in the house, because we want to prevent ourselves from having that circumstance. And so we're trying to flatten the curve, as they say, um, so that we don't have the situation that other big cities are facing. We have to, le we have to listen and learn from the experiences of other cities, and certainly they're reaching out to cities like ours to let us know, what do you need to do to be ready, City of Dallas? And we're listening and acting on those lessons learned. Great, um, thank you so much for that explanation. So all these measures, which are totally uh, necessary, but also very strong, have unfortunately also impacted in a very negative way the economic activity. And this has caused many people to um, even lose their jobs, or many of them uh, having to work from home. What happens if somebody cannot work from home? And what happens if somebody loses their employment? Does the city of Dallas offer any resources, any help for this type of people, for this type of cases? We have um, turned uh, as a city to look to what the most critical needs are at this moment, Consul. We know that there are certain people who are lucky to be able to work at home um, in this moment, but there are many people who uh, work paycheck to paycheck or work in the service industry and have to be out doing their work. And we know that it's going to be impacting them. So we're uh, maintaining um, connections with, with others, other officials at the federal government level to see what, um, what relief is going to be available for our residents. And we're, we're hoping to make those connections to direct resource to, to individuals. For example, the uh, Paycheck Protection Program that was just passed within the last week. Um, it has a broad and inclusive definition of those who are going to be eligible to apply for this loan. And when I say it's a loan, I want people to understand that that is sort of misleading because it is forgiven 
as long as you use it for the the purpose of maintaining your workforce. Um, so there's a few requirements, but you can be a, um, a contractor uh, working on a W-9, or you could be a sole proprietor, and that's very important for our immigrant community. Many of them who are small business owners, many of them who have hair salons, uh, construction companies, et cetera, et cetera, work in the food industries, restaurants, it, as long as they maintain their workforce throughout the, the length of this period of time, they can apply for, um, for that. And so please talk to your banks and understand what that is. And our community, including people who work with us at the city, have been very instrumental to, uh, at that level in Congress to say, we need everybody included, because we know that there are resources that are not going to be available to people um, who are impacted in our communities. Yes, uh, thank you. And do, would you have any comment in regards to the utilities, the payments that every household has to make every month to pay for energy and water? And is there any type of uh, resource that they can uh, look up in your web page? You have a great web page in that regard. So could you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes, first of all, I would like to, to say how proud we are of our public affairs office who's working around the clock to update our, our website and keep it current with the resources that are there. We have a, a, a page at dallascityhall.com slash COVID-19 and people can find our banner there uh, on the front page of the website. And I know that not everybody has a computer in their house, but most of us have a cell phone, right? Mm -hmm. So you can orient it to, to cell phone and it'll come right up. Everything is in English and Spanish. For guidance, it's changing daily. We're trying to update it daily so that people will have the resources they need at hand. And there is a page on there that says community resources. Um, and we have a whole list of those companies that are working with our community to ensure that utilities are not cut off or that there is extensions, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't have every single detail, but if you call my office and you have a question specifically to what your need is, we will find a, we will find a resource on this page or seek one if we can't find it. Yes. I've had an opportunity to check on that web page and I really would like to congratulate you and your office because it is such a great resource. So I would encourage our community to look it up. And I believe you can make searches using a zip code. Is That's that right. Correct? We have a, a new service there. It's called the, the Welcoming Hub or the Community Resource Hub. And we're working with a, with a service provider to ensure that every resource in the community that is listed on this website is available to all of our residents. So it's um, put in your zip code and put in your need. And there should be uh, options available to you on whatever that need is, if it be food, if it be utility assistance, if it be work, et cetera. So, uh, so we're, working, we're working around the clock to make sure that we can uh, deliver services to people that even if the city is not in charge of those services, working with our philanthropic community, working with uh, private industry to ensure that uh, whatever resources out there that we're letting our community know about it. And speaking about services, that are specifically linked to the city. Uh, has there been any resolution or any decision in regard to water services? Yes, thank you. Thank you for that. The Dallas Water, the Dallas Water Department, of course, has extended uh, payments. There, you could be on a payment plan. Uh, nobody's service will be cut off during this uh, situation we're all facing. The important thing is, Consul, is that people reach out. Mm -hmm. Uh, to the water department here at the city to let us know that you need to be on a payment plan or you need to have an extension of payment um, because that, that um, step that the person takes is going to be resolved, but that step should be taken so that, yeah. so that we they know. They need to reach out to the Dallas Water Department. That's right, and you can find that also on the, on the website. Yeah, great, thank you. And I also would like to ask you, Liz, about evictions, which is a great concern. Um, this is the beginning of the month, as you know, and many people may not have the resources to pay for their rent, unfortunately. And how can you possibly stay at home if you don't have a home? Mm -hmm. So can you tell us uh, anything about evictions? Right. Well, that is, a, that is a situation that we're all concerned about, and we know that the community is uh, working with 
pro bono lawyers to help people who have these situations, but what the Texas Supreme Court did was to provide some protections for people who have a need for you know, relief. And, and so there is a moratorium on evictions at the state level. There's also a moratorium on evictions here at the county level and the justices of the Peace Court, which has the court that has jurisdiction over evictions, is not hearing new cases at this time. And, and we will look at it. We're, we're also studying ways at the city that we can um, look to provide other forms of assistance. And in fact, that is going to be deliberated by the city council committee this week. Great. That's great news. And I believe it, we believe at the council that that's very relevant. Another great resource that the city of Dallas has is a program within the police department called UNIDOS. Would you like to talk uh, to us about this fantastic program, please? UNIDOS stands for the, the Police Department United with our Spanish-speaking community. And uh, over the last year, it has been very strengthened because now we have a UNIDOS officer in every sector of the city. And, and it has expanded. We're very proud of this initiative that was taken under uh, Chief Hall to, to reach out to our community who is Spanish speaking so that they know that there should be no wall between serving all of our community. And um, so if, if, everybody wants to, if anybody wants to know more about the Unidos program, um, you can find that on our website as well. And we're happy to connect you with, with them. But what they want you to know is that you should not be afraid to report crime you should not be afraid to be a victim um, of violence and report crime or any other crime, that we're there and we're there to protect and serve all of our residents. Regardless, of course, of their immigration status. We're there to serve all of our residents, and that's not, that's not a concern um, of us when we're trying to go out and protect and serve. Thank you. Um, and um, talking about services, the main concern many times could be medical services. Uh, but our, within our immigrant community, we know there is a lot of people who do not have um, a regular immigration situation or status. And many of them might be afraid of coming forward to request any type of services or maybe afraid uh, you know, about their families being affected. Uh, what can you tell us about this? If, if an undocumented immigrant feels sick and believes he or she might be, you know, affected by the coronavirus, can they actually come forward and look for medical services? Absolutely. No one should be afraid to seek public health services in this moment. And uh, last week, the city manager, Mr. T.C. Broadnecks, who's my boss, and, and I, we put out a letter and a newsletter to our community. It's called the Equity and Inclusion Newsletter, and it's in also in Spanish and English, and we'll be doing one for every two weeks and covering different topics. But in the last, to the last uh, edition, we wanted people to know that any city service that's available is available to all of our residents, um, irrespective of your immigration documentation status. So if you are feeling um, the symptoms of this COVID-19, then we urge you to please come to one of our centers, there's two of them currently, um, to, be, to have a test. There's no cost to this test. If you do come, you can bring any form of ID that you might have, as long as it has your name and your, your photo on it, 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 it's sufficient. So you just mentioned these, uh, I believe you have two sites, uh, community sites for testing. That's right. Um, would the addresses for these community sites be in your webpage as well? Certainly. They are, the two sites are American Airlines Center and Ellis Fieldhouse, which is in southern Dallas, and their exact address and location are listed there on the website. And is there any criteria, like symptomatic cr criteria, somebody has to present to have access to this free testing? Right. If you're experiencing a fever, if you're experiencing shortness of breath, having difficulty breathing, and um, you feel like you have a cough, then yes, those are the three symptoms that need to be reflective if you're going to seek one of these tests. Of course, if um, you wanted to check in with your private physician and seek medical care, you can also do that. But in order to present for, for a test at one of these center, at these locations, those uh, symptoms must be reflective in your person. Uh, and this is because these are community sites uh, for testing, which are for free. 
So that's why you're following certain criteria. But if somebody knows that he or she might have been in contact with somebody with COVID-19, and they are not presenting any symptoms yet, but they would like to get the test, uh, are there private facilities uh, around Dallas that they could have access to as well? Oh, there are private facilities, and, and we suggest that when you can get care, to get care. Um, but these two government or these two sponsored uh, locations are for those people who are presenting. But please, if you do feel like you need to be checked, then um, there's also telehealth services that are being made available to uh, at different hospitals and clinics. And clinics. Well, thank you so very much, Chief Cedillo, Liz, amiga de la comunidad y del consulado. Thank you so much again for the opportunity to uh, talking to you, speaking to you today about this. Uh, situation, giving advice to the community, and also explaining how hard the city of Dallas is working through your uh, umbrella of services and offices to help the community. Thank you so much. While we may not be physically present um, for our community right now, we certainly are present and working. So if somebody needs to contact us, please let them know that we are available at 214-671 5087 and we will do our best to connect uh, their need with a service or direction for services that the person might be needing at that moment. So thank you for, for coming today, Consul. It's always a pleasure to see you and please stay well and best wishes to you and your family. Thank you. Likewise, thank you. Thank you for, to Lisa Dillo for this important message to the community. Thank you so much.